All right, man. What's up? It's your boy Jamie man here. Listen, editor Jay in the building. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I recorded these parts at different times, so it seemed like a small jump cut. Y'all probably not even going to notice it because I'm W editor. You know what I'm saying? But if y'all notice these small jumps because I recorded these at different times, but this is a new series I wanted to start called Jay's uh, Jay's Rundown. I'm just talking about MMA boxing, MMA boxing, MMA. So instead of just doing reactions to it, why not just make a whole video on it? gonna try to get these up every sunday hope y'all enjoy them y'all let me know how much y'all enjoy them in the comments down below subscribe if you're new man and uh yeah man appreciate y'all for watching and get right into the video man hope y'all enjoy it peace All right, y'all. So the first, first, first order of business. Yes, y'all know I was gonna talk about this. Welcome to Jay's rundown. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna give y'all a rundown of this boxing and MMA type shit. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. Start off with John Jones. Y'all know John Jones is my favorite fighter. So he went up to Vegas. What was that? Saturday or Friday? So yesterday, uh, to do this this Hall of Fame ceremony. Uh, to get inducted into the Hall of Fame for his fight with Alexander Gustafson, 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 whatever, that hit their first fight, which was probably the best like heavyweight fight of all time, you know, probably it is, and so that night, <laughs> that night, we wake up in the morning, that, what was it, no, 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 it was that same day, so, so that Thursday, it was the, the, the Hall of Fame ceremony, that Friday, I'm sorry, so yesterday, that Friday, Everybody gets a notification that John Jones is arrested. Yes, John Jones got arrested. John gotta stop fucking up, man. He gotta stop fucking up. It said he got charged with domestic battery, uh, vehicle tampering by a Nevada judge. So that that's very weird. They say everything is pending right now. All of his management, they're not really saying anything as far as uh, what they're gonna do. They haven't said any public statements, things like that. And actually today, Literally, I just watched the AJ Fury car live. They said they're gonna <laughs> say they're gonna take. Uh, they're, I'm just calling body fluids. They're gonna take body fluids to try to match up DNA things like that. So it's an interesting thing, you know. Welcome back, John. You know, welcome back. Y'all know John's my favorite fighter. Like I said, he he gotta clean this shit up. He has to clean this shit up. I believe John Jones can be heavyweight champion. He has to clean shit like this up gotta get better man you can't keep you know saying i'm gonna get better i've changed it actually it has changed from the for the past for the most part for the past year and a half john has been he hasn't said anything squeaky clean outside of some comments on twitter about some fights man, that's that's forgivable but with the shit that he's doing man john is about to hit 35 he has to stop doing shit like this he's a grown ass man you gotta help you know hold yourself accountable which i think he is but he actually is getting he has to stop getting this stupid shit like this. If this isn't, I wouldn't say major, but he has to get stop getting this stupid shit like this. Uh, wishing all the best for John. But I hope he comes back in the octagon. I hope, you know, he could just brush this off, man, and just come back. He he gotta stop shit like this. You know, I know a lot of people don't fuck with John. I'm gonna fuck with John until, you know, to the end. But again, I'm realistic. You know, this is 100% no bias. You know what I'm saying? 100% no bias. John john gotta you know he gotta clean up bro he got a man up you know what i'm saying and let's transition over to that next thing yes the next thing aj fury well not aj fury aj Usyk. like i said i just got finished watching this card just right after i finished watching this card and aj Usyk, man <sighs> aj Usyk, Usyk, he Usyk looked fantastic um, I'm a man of my, <laughs> I'm a man of my word when I can admit when I'm wrong, y'all. Uh, Yusik looked damn good. Yusik looked so good on um, pause. He was that that cross, that that left cross, that left straight that he was landing was just beautiful, man. That thing was nasty. It was, it was beautiful, y'all. And for AJ, what I kind of don't get understand, and it's kind of a thing with AJ. Every time he goes light, he tries to box. He went light in the first Ruiz fight, and he went light in this fight. Both fights, he tried to box, and what happened? He lost. When he comes in the heavy, he tends to be the AJ we know and love. I thought 
in this fight, I thought he was just coming in lighter, you know, just to stay light, to be more elusive, keep, you know, stay up on his feet, things like that, you know, use against the smaller, you know, more elusive man, more elusive boxer, the pure boxer. So I, I thought, you know, he would be AJ that we know. Uh, AJ didn't look fantastic. And Concept reached out to my UK bro, Fum. He made fun and said that's how, that's not how they sound well. The UK bro, Fum. You know, shout out to my guy Reese. He said, "It AJ just he has to get his ass whooped to learn his lesson." And I, I think it's true. Every time he gets his ass whooped, he learns a valuable lesson, and he comes back the AJ we know. And then the next fight, he's the AJ of old. And then he's the AJ we know. And it's just a repeating cycle. It's a domino effect. You know what I'm saying? So, but. The fight looked fantastic. Usyk was working the body. It almost looked like Usyk slowed down. Then he caught a second win almost. He was still elusive. He wasn't like moving, but he was still elusive. He wasn't like throwing feints or anything, but he was he was fucking AJ up. AJ landed, you know, some good shots, but he was fucking AJ up. I believe AJ is going to bounce back. AJ's going to be fine. The rematch is going to be fantastic because I know AJ can make those adjustments. And the job ain't done for Usyk. Job ain't done because he gotta do this shit all over again and more than likely in the UK. So um yeah, this is crazy. I would have thought AJ would have came out, you know what I'm saying, behind that jab, throwing those power shots, you know, working a body. He didn't even work the body. He could burn there was so many opportunities where he could have worked the body. I think Yusuf was hip to him, you know, trying to outbox him. They kind of knew that him and his team, you know, shout out to uh Loma Sr. He, he, AJ didn't even work the body. You know what I'm saying? He could have put some power shots on, on Usyk to slow him down. Could have got Usyk out of there. Who knows? But ah, I'm very disappointed. Usyk pretty much dominated the whole fight. Like I said, looked elusive, looked great. And I can admit when I'm wrong on Cam, Usyk proved me wrong. I wouldn't say in the sense of wrong. I thought he was just too small for heavyweight. That's what, really what I thought it was. And I thought he didn't beat any premier heavyweights. Joe Joyce, okay? But uh, did that, 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 okay? And uh, Chisora. And the fuck? I'm not, you know, listen, I'm not a fan of Chisora. Sorry. Or Joe Joyce. You know, I'm the UK bro, so I'm not. So I thought, I didn't see anything I liked in those fights. I was like, okay, he beat Joe Joyce. And, uh, and Derek Chisora. Okay. Can he beat AJ? Now, I thought he could because he was too small. I thought AJ was going to be too big, too strong for him. But AJ came out with the wrong game plan, used to capitalize. And that's that, man. So let's get into the next one, which is going to be the actual ratings. Can we get into the rankings? going to be actual rankings for the Ring Magazine. Yes, Ring Magazine. Let's talk about this, man. So looking at it now, they have Canelo at one. They have, uh, I never can get this dude's name right, Nayowa and Inanu at two, Crawford at three, Yusuke at four, Taylor at five, Spence at six, Tio at seven, Strada at, at eight, Loma at nine, and Ayoka at ten. All right. So at this top five, this top five, I really think needs to be switched around. I think Crawford is going to drop to five. Taylor's gonna move up to four. Ninano's gonna drop to three. And Yusik is actually gonna take the number two spot. Yeah, Yusik is gonna take the number two spot. Uh, if you look at my top 10 boxes of 2021, I didn't even have Yusik in my top 10. And you know, so this is a complete change of heart. Yes, complete change of heart, man. Yusik, man, you gained a fan. I really like just I was, I was always, you know, not I won't say a fan, but I respected his skill. I just get didn't give him enough of spec as as far as you know him moving up the heavyweight prove me wrong shut me the fuck up you know i'm a full-on fan now well not a full-on fan I, i'm just a fan of you know watching his fights i'm gonna be tuning into a lot more Usyk fights but uh shout out to alexander Usyk, Usyk, you know but nobody's gonna dethrone canelo besides uh kayla plank kayla plank is gonna be the number one <laughs> yeah y'all know Y'all know what time it is. Yeah, Kayla Plant. Kayla Plant is going to be the number one fighter in the world after he beats Canelo. He's going to be undisputed uh, middleweight champion. So, shout out to Yusik. But uh, let's get into the next thing. Those rankings need to really be fixed around. Uh, Jamel Cholo needs to be in a, the top 10 somewhere. I just wanted to say that Jamel Cholo needs to be in the top 10 somewhere in that. But let's get into the next thing. Let me full screen this. The next thing, we're going to be talking about Fury Wilder. Yes, Fury 
Wilder happened in October 9th going down. We got you got my guy Esta Vida. He hot. You got his guy, Deontay Wilder. Versus Tyson Fury, mom. Fun bruv. You know, Tyson Fury. 30 0 and 1. Deontay Wilder 42 1 and 1. This is gonna be a fantastic fight. I want Wilder to knock Fury shit loose, but that's probably not gonna happen. Fury's gonna do him in more than likely. Uh, Fury's just the better, superior boxer. He's more elusive. And you know, I understand, you know, you're training with the guy that you KO viciously. Uh, I don't understand that. But um, he's still working with JDS. Well, I, I, I'm not very high on JDS. I don't like him. I don't like him as a trainer. I do like Malik Scott's approach to the, to the mental preparation for Wilder. I do enjoy that. But I don't think Wilder's gonna go out there and try to box Fury. That's not happening. Once Fury starts to land those punches and Wilder realizes he can't do what that trainer is going to do, he's going to go back to what he knows, and that's throwing that big-ass right hand. I think Malik Scott and him should be showing him how to set up the right hand a little bit better to throw Fury off, but going out there boxing, that ain't going to happen. The, the state of this heavyweight division is not in shambles, but I don't know what the fuck you're going to do with either of the winner. Because Dot said uh, go straight for, for Undisputed, but then I'm more than sure Joshua's going to want his rematch. And I know these guys, they, they, they want to stay active, especially if Wilder wins. I know Wilder wants to stay active. These dudes don't want to fight once a fucking year, man. Uh, so you gotta you gotta get them in there. You gotta get them active. I know Fury's probably gonna want to. Both of these dudes, whoever wins, is gonna want to jump back in there. So I don't know, man. Do I think Fury beats Usyk? Yes. Do I think Wilder beats Usyk? No. Do I think Fury beats AJ? Yes. Do I think Wilder beats AJ? Hell yes. So we'll see, man. I don't know uh, what they're gonna do with this, but I have Fury winning this, uh, probably by KO again. But who, who knows, man? This boxing. This is going to be a fantastic fight. October 9th, Saturday, man. Y'all be on the lookout for that. That is in, what, less than two weeks? Almost two weeks? So y'all be on the tune for that. Wilder looks locked in. Locked in. Fury looks locked in. Let's get it, man. So enough of the boxing, man. Let's get into some, some more MMA news. Somebody cue the music again. MMA. Breaking news. Yes, breaking news. Breaking news. Oh, I didn't even switch screens, you know what I'm saying? Hold on, let me switch screens. Breaking news. El Jermaine Sterling pulls out of his fight against Petr at UFC 267. Now, my whole thoughts on this is he shouldn't have been, he shouldn't have accepted that fight to begin with. He got a, a neck surgery and post-op one month after, about a month and a half after he's accepting the fight. Eljo himself said, before he even got the surgery, that the surgery is going to take at least six months. And so he's not going to probably be back until November. And he took a fight at the end of October. I don't kind of get that. So he shouldn't have even took the fight. He should still be rehabbing. He still can do day-to-day -day things, playing basketball. Uh, I saw him when he was playing basketball. He can do things like that. But training and, and fighting, he shouldn't be doing any of that. Maybe some light sparring, you know, with pads on or something. But as far as like wrestling, full-on hard contact, maybe hitting some pads light. But... No, 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 no. He shouldn't be not even smart. He shouldn't even be smart to be honest. He just probably just should be just hitting pads and you know getting that physical therapy and getting that rehab back in so he can get back to form and defend his belt. But El Jermaine, he's gonna get a lot of hate. I don't know why he gets the hate. Petrion was the one that fucked up and didn't know the rules. They need El Jermaine Sterling in the face. Petrion cost himself the title. I don't I don't get MMA fans, but El Jermaine Sterling, man, wishing you nothing but the best, bro. You gotta just noise noise out the haters bro I, I got a feeling you just post we should see the, the reaction people are gonna give you but wishing Eljamain Sterling nothing but the best he should not have taken this fight he shouldn't have taken the fight don't know why he took the fight but he took the fight uh, I don't know man but he took the fight all right y'all here we go and we have the UFC 266 uh, recap. Yes, recap. We're going to start at the beginning of the prelims. Roxanne Modafferi versus Telia Santos. Telia Santos straight up dominated. Roxanne, Roxanne is probably going to get caught, cut more than likely. Uh, she didn't show me anything new, anything different. She just got, you know, dominated. She she has heart. We all know Roxanne, what Roxanne has, what she presents. So, yeah. 
Chris Dawkins versus Shamil. Uh, I, I'm not even gonna try to say that last name. Chris Dawkins is a fucking monster. That check left hook that he landed on fucking Shamil, that got him at the end of the that at around the end of the first was crazy. Then the cross he landed and fucking the spit, the rocky sweat and all that shit that was landing that shit that shit looked crazy. Who man, this dude's gonna be a real problem. He called out Stipe. Uh, who else did he call out? Um, uh, fuck. He called out. Uh, I think he called out the winner of Jarzinho, uh, Curtis Blades, and he called out somebody else. I can't remember. I think it was Aspinall that fight, if I'm not mistaken, the winner of that. But <laughs> Chris Dawkins look good, y'all. Fighter to look out for. Real, real nice prospect, man. Next up, man, we got Dan Hooker and Najrat. Uh, hey, listen, I'm I'm not gonna be trying to say these last names, man. I'm sorry. I don't want to butcher them. Dan Hooker looked fantastic, back to form. I think he did come come back kind of too fast after the beating he took from uh not the beating but the war he was in the two wars that he was in with Paul Felder Dustin Poirier should took a little bit of time more time off but he came back against Michael Chandler was backing up like let Michael Chandler's forward pressure you know do him in and get him you know knock the fuck out basically and I felt like in this fight and it looked like in this fight he was like I'm going back to the old Dan Hooker he was pressuring landing the body kicks landing a jab his accuracy was just on point leg kicks he was wrestling dan hooker was wrestling najra we, we would have thought najra would wrestle dan hooker you know najra being a product of tristar with faraz Zahabi and gsp that is crazy dan hook was landing ground and pound getting them down with ease dan hooker looked fantastic that his clinch work is so amazing so i can't wait to see who dan hooker fights next he he wants benil and i think he fucks benil up no cap he fucks Benil up can't wait to see this fight all uh, right let's get into the next one um the next one is Mar Marlon Moraes versus Mirab de Villa Shisa de Villa Shisi de Villa he listen y'all know Marlon I thought Marlon was gonna lose this fight actually 29 28 but before the fight started I was you know I was swayed I was like I think Marlon's gonna win this fight by KO and uh Marlon, Marlon, Marlon. He didn't pick your shots, man. He should have calmed down. I honestly thought the fight should have been stopped when he was when he knocked down me, Rob. But you know, gave him a chance, got back up, second round came. He was just grounded, pounding. Marlon got him out of there. Simple. Well, was it the first round? Was it? I, I don't know. Fuck, I can't remember. Yeah, it was second round, second round. And that for we we don't see Mirab get finishes. He, he grounded pounds, but he never goes with the KO. You saw when he was grounded pounded. He look nah, he looked vicious and mean. He looked crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's the grounded pound I like to see. But Marlon Marais look good. He's more than likely gonna get cut. Uh he should have picked his shots a little bit more. He rushed in. He rushed it. Let me rob get the clinch and recover. He shouldn't have did that. He should have picked his shots. He probably would have got the KO. You see that a lot of guys rushing in trying to get the KO. But Marlon Marais, man, he's a game fighter. I really didn't like, you know, the way he rushed in. But he looked fantastic, though. He had Mirab on his heels. Knocked him down. I think Mirab said he wants Jose Aldo. Or the people are exit for Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo fucks Mirab up viciously. <laughs> viciously. He has to take down defense. He has the, the, the kickboxing, the power, the speed. He has everything. Mirab is in big trouble if he accepts that that Jose Aldo fight. But I think Jose is waiting on uh, TJ to finish. But TJ has another, what, about five months to recover. So I think Jose wants to hop. Jose is probably going to hop back in there, stay active before the year is over. And I think Mirab, you know, he, come, he basically came out unscathed. But aside from the knockdown, he's probably going to want to fight before the end of the year as well. So it looks like that fight is going to shape up pretty nicely. So let's get into the main card, which I'm not going to lie. It didn't start off good. I thought it. Uh, that's what I thought. Cynthia Calvillo versus Jessica Andrade. Jessica Andrade coming off that, that dom dominating uh, loss <laughs> against Valentina Shevchenko. She came back and TKO Cynthia. Now, T I thought this fight was going to go the distance. Cynthia, is, you know, she's game. She has a chin. She has heart. She has wrestling. Thought she had the tools, you know, to hang in there with Valentina. Clearly, she did not because she got fucked up. You know, she, she got fucked up. Nothing more to say. Honestly, the division is pretty dead. It's gonna turn into a uh, flyweight when DJ was there. 
uh, when DJ the men's flyweight, how the men's flyweight turned out, because Valentina's just so fucking dominant, dog. She's dominating everybody at their own game. <laughs> That's just it is what it is, man. She's just dominating everybody. So I don't know. I'm Josh probably gonna get a rematch and get fucked up again, honestly. So. That's that. Jarzinho, Rosa Strike, Curtis Blaze. Very disappointing. Jarzinho thought he was going to win. He was looking for the counter strike way too often. He did hit Curtis Blades with a flying knee going in for a takedown, which probably should have KO'd Curtis. But Curtis, you know, you know, he hung in there. His eye was very swollen. Hung in there, got the decision. It was one of those. He Curtis got the. He, he, Curtis was wrestling like he wrestled against Volkov, just laying on him, doing a bare minimum to get the you know so the ref doesn't stand him up. Jarzinho, uh, Jarzinho's on the brink. Uh, he's not on the brink, but he's getting close to, uh, you know, gatekeeper range. Uh, should we keep this going in the UFC roster range? Because he isn't looking too good, bro. That that Francis, him getting knocked out by Francis is really fucking him up. So let's see i mean he looked good in the in a in the jds fight what was that jarzinho and then the game fight he got fucked up as well so i don't i, I don't know man well was that before the i don't know was that was that jds fight before the francis fight? i don't fucking know but fuck he he he's not looking like jarzinho of old so that's that and now let's get into the people's main event robbie long versus nick diaz and i actually thought this should have been a doctor stop well not really Nah, this is tko Nick Diaz looked fucking fantastic. His boxing skills were on point. Cardio looked on point. Accuracy, speed, well, not really. Nick Diaz really never had speed. I don't know where people, oh my goodness, Nick Diaz looks super slow. Nick Diaz never had speed. Uh, Nick Diaz looked fantastic, man. Six years out of the game, he was hitting Robbie Lawler with some. He was fucking, he, he was giving Robbie Lawler some work. Robbie Lawler was giving him some work. Robbie Lawler uh, broke his nose. So this is the fight sequence goes. Nick Diaz lands a combo and I think Robbie Lawler sways hit him with an uppercut. Right on the nose, breaks his nose. Robbie Lawler's like, fuck that. I'm not trying to get caught in no jujitsu. He's like, I don't want no jujitsu work. He didn't want no jujitsu work. Uh, try to send him up. Nick's like, nah, my fucking nose is broken. Fight's over. Uh, Robbie gets the third round to kill. This was a fun fight. Uh, this is probably my favorite fight on the main card besides the main event which we're gonna get into uh so yeah i really love this fight so let's get into the next fight man valentina as y'all know valentina is my third favorite fighter man i really liked her man she she looked good i mean lauren murray talking about she she she's gonna show us something <laughs> that she's never seen before like valentina's last five opponents has said that you know that the steve i gotta give you steven a face Bitch, come on now. You, you was gonna get fucked up. I thought Valentine was gonna. I, I gave you the benefit of the doubt, Lauren. And I thought Valentine was gonna fuck you up in the third round. You actually let, lasted a round longer and got fucked up in the fourth round and got KO'd. Really, not much more to say about this fight. Valentina just dominated. Six defenses. What more do, does she do in this division? She's not gonna move up and fight Valentina. She's not moving up and fighting. Uh, she's not moving down and fighting uh rose that's too much of a weight cut she's not going up so I, I don't know what you do with valentina but beautiful win for her and the main event man the main event of the evening the last subject we're going to talk about alexander volkanovsky versus brian ortega the the fight played out how i thought it was going to play out volkanovsky dominating i predicted this x aj x and anybody who's been in my streams if y'all been in my streams y'all know i've said this i said he was going to win 50 44 yes 50 44 or 50 45 and he won 54 well not 50 45 i think it was like 49 46 well what was this what was the cards let's look at the cards what, what was the score cards uh it's not telling us the cards can we see the cards, man? It's not gonna tell us the cards, but I kind of predicted this. <laughs> Brian Ortega, his boxing, it's not, it's not there. And a lot of people got fooled because TKZ is a technical fighter. And like, oh my goodness, Brian Ortega, he's changed his game around so much, which he has, but it hasn't changed uh, that much. TKZ likes to be technical. Brian Ortega likes to be technical. Brian Ortega just has the longer reach. He has better kicks. He, you know, what I'm saying he has the the more better accuracy, things like that. So, 
he won that fight but when someone's in brian ortega's face landing shots landing leg kicks trying to wrestle him clinching him landing jabs working a body he tends doesn't he he hasn't fixed that problem that's what max holloway did and that's what brian or ellen daniel the volkanovsky took what brian uh max holloway did and took it past 10 because i honestly think this beat was damn near worse to be honest um this was sad uh brian ortega had his moment in the third round he dropped him jumped the guillotine full amount i don't think it was really under the chin like that uh he rolls over into a uh, guard i believe then ortega uh volkanovsky tries to get into a uh, stack guard volkanovsky uh gets caught in a triangle brian ortega tries to switch it into an arm bar uh volkanovsky gets out rolls out scrambles out fights back up on the feet and then it proceeds to go back what the fight was before a complete beating the fight should have been ended after the fourth round really after the third round because brian ortega couldn't get up yeah you know he couldn't get up for like a good 10 seconds he was wobbling and shit fight should have been stopped but great win for volkanovsky and if he gets another defense man we gotta really start talking about volkanovsky being one of the goats in in in, in featherweight history you know, I think if he beats Josie's record of nine defenses, he's going to be the featherweight GOAT. Honestly, if he gets like seven, I think you can, you, you have the argument, to be honest. But this dude is, this dude is for real. Those dudes at City Kickboxing, they look, both of them, both of them, him and Dan Hooker looked amazing. So, can't wait to see Volkanovski back in action. If Yair Rodriguez defeats Max Holloway, which is a very tall task, he's going to get the title shot. Whoever wins that fight is getting a title shot. Brian Ortega more than likely is either gonna fight Kelvin Cater or he's gonna fight Giga. So looking out for that man, uh we're gonna see what happens. Brian Ortega should have been wrestling, clinching more. Don't know what happened with that. Uh, I think he got fooled by that TKZ fight, thinking, you know, folks, the smaller fight, I'm gonna do what I did in a TKZ fight. And that didn't happen, man. That did not happen. Let me zoom in on you bitches. All right, let me zoom in on y'all, man. Appreciate y'all for coming through to the Jay's Rundown, man. This is my first week doing this, man. Um, I'm recording. I recorded a lot of these parts at different times, so I appreciate y'all for that, man. Uh, until next time, man. It's your boy Jamie Maywell on a road to 800. We are sitting at 766 subscribers. By the time this video is uploaded, hope we are at more. Appreciate everybody that came through, man. Love all the support, man. See y'all later, man. It's your boy Jamie May, man. Hope you like. Hope you comment. Hit that bell, man. Hit that notification bell for your boy, please, man. Till next time, man. It's your boy Jamie May, man. See y'all later. Peace out, man. Remember, beating your meat is not productive. See y'all next time, man. It's your boy, Jamie May. And I'm out. Peace.